Countdown Game Show. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Countdown is a British game show presented by Des O'Connor and Carol Borderman. It was the first programme aired on Channel 4, and over 50 series have been broadcast since its debut on the 2nd of November 1982. With over 4,000 episodes, it is one of the longest-running game shows in the world. The programme was presented by Richard Whiteley for over 20 years, until his death in 2005. His position was taken over by Des Lynham, who retired from the show on the 22nd of December 2006, and was replaced by Des O'Connor on the 2nd of January 2007. A celebrity guest also features in every programme, and provides a brief interlude before the first advertisement break. The two contestants in each episode compete in three disciplines, 11 letters rounds, in which the contestants attempt to make the longest word from nine randomly chosen letters, three numbers rounds, in which the contestants must use arithmetic to make a random target number from six other numbers, and the conundrum, a buzzer round, in which the contestants try to be the first to solve a nine-letter anagram. During the series heats, the winning contestant returns the next day until he or she has accumulated eight wins. The best contestants are invited back for the series finals, which are decided in knockout format. Contestants of exceptional skill have received national media coverage, and the programme as a whole is widely recognised and parodied within British culture. Section 1. History Origins Countdown is based on the French game show Des Chiffres et des Lettres, Numbers and Letters, created by Armand Jamot. The format was brought to Britain by Marcel Stellman, a Belgian record executive, who had watched the French show and believed it could be popular overseas. Yorkshire Television purchased the format and commissioned a series of eight shows under the title Calendar Countdown, which were to be part of their regional news programme, Calendar. As the presenter of Calendar, Richard Whiteley was the natural choice to present Calendar Countdown. His daily appearances on both shows earned him the nickname Twice Nightly. These shows were only broadcast in the Yorkshire area. An additional pilot episode was made with a refined format, although it was never broadcast. A new British television channel, Channel 4, was due to launch in November 1982, and bought the newly renamed Countdown on the strength of this additional episode. Countdown was the first programme to be broadcast on the new channel. Richard Whiteley introduced the first Channel 4 episode of Countdown with the words, As the countdown to a brand new channel ends, a brand new countdown begins. Presenters Calendar Countdown was presented by Richard Whiteley, with Cathy Hipner and Denise McFarland Crookshanks managing the numbers and letters rounds respectively. When Countdown was commissioned for Channel 4, the number of hostesses expanded further. Cathy Hipner and Beverly Isherwood selected the letters and numbers tiles respectively, and calculations in the numbers round were checked by Linda Barrett or Carol Borderman. Borderman, a Cambridge graduate and member of Mensa, was appointed as one of the numbers experts after responding to an advertisement in a national newspaper which asked for a young woman who would like to become a game show hostess. Unlike almost any other game show hostess of the time, however, the advertisement also made it clear that the applicant's appearance would be less important than their being a talented mathematician. Gradually, the tasks performed by the extra presenters were taken over by Carol Boardman, whose role within the show is now essentially that of co-presenter. The show was briefly taken off air following Whiteley's death in June 2005, but reappeared in October 2005 with Des Lynham as presenter. On the 30th of September 2006, Lynham admitted he had decided to leave the programme after Christmas 2006. Lynham's departure was due to travel requirements for the demanding filming schedule, with the show recorded in Leeds and Lynham living 250 miles away in Worthing, West Sussex. Channel 4 had tried an extra programme on Saturday in early 2006, which Lynham had agreed to, subject to part of the filming schedule being moved nearer to his home. However, viewers reacted angrily to the idea of the show leaving Leeds, and when Lynham found out that a move would cause considerable disruption for many of the programme's camera crew, he decided to leave. On the 7th of November 2006, it was announced that Des O'Connor would succeed Lynham as host. On the 22nd of December 2006, Lynham presented his final show as Countdown presenter. The other studio mainstay is Dictionary Corner, which houses a lexicographer and that week's celebrity guest. The role of the lexicographer is to verify the words offered by the contestants and relay any longer or otherwise interesting words available. 
The lexicographer is aided in finding these words by the show's producers, currently Mike and Wiley and Damien Eady. Many lexicographers have appeared over the years, but since her debut in 1992, Susie Dent has become synonymous with the role and has now made over a thousand appearances. The celebrity guest, sometimes known as the Dictionary Dweller, also contributes words and provides a short interlude at the end of the first section of the show. Dwellers have included Joe Brand, Martin Jarvis and Geoffrey Durham, providing poems, anecdotes, puzzles and magic tricks. Character Countdown quickly established cult status within British television, an image which it maintains today despite numerous changes of rules and personnel. The programme's audience comprises mainly students, housewives and pensioners due to the tea time broadcast slot and inclusive appeal of its format and presentation. Countdown has been one of Channel 4's most watched programmes for over 20 years, but has never won a major television award. In its 3.30pm broadcast slot, the show draws about 1.7 million viewers every day, around half a million fewer than with Richard Whiteley presenting, and the Series 54 final on the 26th of May 2006 attracted 2.5 million viewers. Up to 2 million viewers had watched the show daily in its previous 4.15pm slot. The drop in viewers following the scheduling change, coupled with the show's perceived educational benefits, even caused Labour MP Jonathan Shaw to table a motion in the UK Parliament requesting that the show be returned to its later time. In keeping with the show's friendly nature, contestants compete not for money, but the countdown winner's teapot, which is custom made and can only be obtained by winning a game on the programme. The prize for the series winner is a leather-bound copy of the 20-volume Oxford English Dictionary, worth £4,000 sterling. However, Series 31 winner David Atten refused this prize on account of his strict veganism, instead opting for a CD-ROM version of the dictionaries and donating the monetary difference to charity. Though the style and colour scheme of the set has changed many times, the clock has always provided the centrepiece, and, like the clock music composed by Alan Hawkshaw, is an enduring and well-recognised feature of Countdown. Executive producer John Mead once commissioned Hawkshaw to revise the music for extra intensity. After hundreds of complaints from viewers, the old tune was reinstated. Section 2. Format Countdown has occupied a tea time broadcast slot since its inception. Currently, an episode lasts around 45 minutes, including advertising breaks. During the normal series, the winner of each game returns for the next day's show. If a player wins eight games, they are declared an octo-champ and retire until the series finals. At the end of the series, the eight players with most wins, or the highest total score in the event of a tie, are invited back to compete in the series finals. They are seeded in a knockout tournament, with the first seed playing the eighth seed, the second playing the seventh, and so on. The winner of this knockout, which culminates in the grand final, becomes the series champion. Each series lasts around six months, with about 125 episodes. Approximately every four series, a Champion of Champions tournament takes place. For this, 16 of the best players to have appeared since the previous championship are invited back for another knockout tournament. The producer, former contestant Damien Eady, decides which players to include, but typically the tournament includes the series winners and other noteworthy contestants. Series 33 was designated a Supreme Championship, in which 56 of the best contestants from all the previous series returned for another knockout tournament. Series 10 champion Harvey Freeman was declared Supreme Champion after beating Alan Saldana in the final. There are also occasional special episodes in which past contestants return for themed matches. For example, David Acton and Kenneth Mickey returned for a rematch of their Series 31 final, while brothers and former contestants Sanjay and Sandeep Mazumda played off against each other on the 20th of December 2004. The game is split into three sections, separated by advertising breaks. The first two sections each contain four letters rounds and a numbers round, while the last section has three letters rounds, a numbers round, and a final conundrum. At the end of the first two sections, O'Connor poses an anagram with a cryptic clue for the viewers at home, called the Tea Time Teaser. The solution is revealed at the start of the next section. When the Tea Time Teaser was first introduced, the anagrams were seven letters long, but have since been extended to eight. Letters Round Letter tiles are arranged face down into two piles, one all consonants, the other vowels. The contestant chooses a pile, 
and Vorderman reveals the top tile from that pile and places it on the board. A selection of nine tiles is generated in this way, and must contain at least three vowels and four consonants. Then the clock is started, and both contestants have 30 seconds to come up with the longest word they can make from the available letters. Each letter may be used only as often as it appears in the selection. The frequencies of the letters within each pile are weighted according to their frequency in natural English, in the same manner as Scrabble. For example, there are many N's and R's in the consonant pile, but only one Q. Contestants write down the words they have found during the round, in case they have the same one. After the 30 seconds is up, the players declare the length of their chosen word, with the player who selected the letters declaring first. If either player has not written their word down in time, he or she must declare this also. The words are then revealed. If either player has not written their word down, that word is revealed first, otherwise the shorter word is shown first. Only the contestant with the longer word scores points. Both score in the event of a tie. One point is scored per letter, except for nine-lettered words, which score 18 points. If a contestant offers an invalid word, then they score no points. If the second player reveals the same word as the first, this must be proved by showing the word to either the host or celebrity guest, whoever is closest. Finally, Dictionary Corner reveals the best word they could find from the selection, aided by the production team. Any word which appears in the Oxford Dictionary of English is allowable, as well as some inflections. Standard inflections of nouns and verbs, for example, escapes, escaped, and escaping, are accepted, though not explicitly stated in the dictionary. Comparative and superlative forms of monosyllabic adjectives, for example, greater and greatest, are valid, although these, too, are not explicitly stated. For longer adjectives, the inflections must be stated explicitly. However, some words given in the dictionary are not permitted. Proper nouns, such as Kurdistan, hyphenated words, such as re-embark, some plurals of mass nouns, such as mankinds, and words that occur only in combination. For example, missile, M-I-S-T-L-E, is invalid, as it is used only in missile thrush. Also, only British spelling is permitted. American spellings and inflections, such as flavor, F-L-A-V-O-R, and signaled, S-I-G-N-A-L-E-D, are invalid. Example. Contestant 1 chooses five consonants, then three vowels, then another consonant. Selection is G, Y, H, D, N, O, E, U, R. Contestant 1 declares 7, while contestant 2 declares 8. Contestant 1 reveals younger, but contestant 2 has hydrogen and scores 8 points. Contestant 1 receives no points for this round. Dictionary Corner notes Greyhound, which would have scored 18 points as a nine-letter word. Numbers Round One contestant selects six of 24 shuffled tiles. The tiles are arranged into two groups, four large numbers, 25, 50, 75, and 100, and the remainder of small numbers, which comprise two each of the numbers 1 to 10. The contestant dictates how many large numbers are in the selection, anywhere from none to all four. A random three-digit target is generated by an electronic machine, affectionately known as CECIL, which stands for Countdown Electronic Calculator in Leeds. The contestants then have 30 seconds to get as near to the target as possible by combining the six numbers selected with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Numbers can be used as many times as they appear in the selection, and need not all be used. Decimals and fractions are not allowed. Only integers may be used at any stage of the calculation. Points are awarded for the closest solution, and again both contestants score if the solutions are equally close. Ten points are given for an exact answer, seven points for a non-exact solution up to five from the target, and five points for a solution between six and ten from the target. If neither contestant can get within ten, no points are awarded. Example. Contestant 1 requests two large numbers and four small numbers. Selection is 75, 50, 2, 3, 8, 7. Randomly generated target is 812. Contestant 1 declares 813, while contestant 2 declares 815. Contestant 1 is closer, and so reveals 75 plus 50 
minus 8 equals 117. 3 multiplied by 2 equals 6. 117 multiplied by 7 minus 6 equals 813, which scores 7 points. Carol Vorderman notes 50 plus 8 equals 58. 7 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 58 equals 812, which would have scored 10 points. For some games, there are many ways to reach the target exactly. However, not all games are solvable, and for some selections it is impossible even to get within 10. There is a tactical element in selecting how many large numbers to include. One large and five small numbers is the most popular selection, despite two large numbers giving the best chance of the game being solvable exactly. Selections with zero or four large numbers are generally considered the hardest. Conundrum. The final round of the game is the countdown conundrum. A board revolves to reveal the conundrum, a nine-lettered anagram, usually arranged into the form of two condensed words, as in the example. The contestants have 30 seconds to find the word. The first contestant to buzz with the correct answer is awarded 10 points, but each contestant may guess only once. Once a contestant guesses correctly, or the time expires, a second board rotates to reveal the answer. Each conundrum is designed to have only one solution, but if unintentionally the conundrum has two answers, e.g. cart horse and orchestra, then either is accepted. A crucial countdown conundrum occurs if, before the conundrum, the leading contestant is ahead by ten points or fewer. The studio lights are dimmed, and the first contestant to answer correctly wins the game. If the scores are level after the conundrum, additional conundrums are used until the match is decided. Example. Conundrum is revealed. C H I N A L U N G, spelling China Lung. Contestant 1 buzzes and says launching, which scores 10 points. Evolution. The rules of countdown are derived from those of De Chiffre et des Lettres. Perhaps the biggest difference is the length of the round. De Chiffre et des Lettres rounds are each 45 seconds long to countdowns 30. Also, De Chiffre et des Lettres has a standard letters round as its final round, so there is no analogue to countdown's conundrum finale. However, De Chiffre et des Lettres has an alternative two rounds, called duels, in which players compete to solve a mental arithmetic problem, extract two themed words, or spell a rare word. Other minor discrepancies include a different numbers scoring system, 9 points for an exact solution, or 6 points for the closest inexact solution in De Chiffre et des Lettres, and the proportion of letters to numbers rounds, 11 to 3 in Countdown, 8 to 4 in De Chiffre et des Lettres. The pilot episode followed significantly different rules to the current ones, most noticeably, only eight letters were selected for each letters round. If two contestants offered a word of the same length, or an equally close solution to a numbers game, then only the contestant who made the selection for that round was awarded points. Also, only five points were given for an exact numbers solution, three for a solution within five, and one point for the closer solution, no matter how far away. Until the end of series 21, if the two contestants had equal scores after the first conundrum, the match was considered a draw, and they both returned for the next show. A significant change in the format occurred in September 2001, when the show was expanded from 9 rounds and 30 minutes to the current 15 rounds and 45 minutes. The older format was split into two halves, each having three letters and one numbers game, with the conundrum at the end of the second half. When the format was expanded to 15 rounds, Richard Whiteley jokingly continued to refer to the three segments of the show as halves. Under the old format, grand finals were specially extended shows of 14 rounds, but now all shows follow the same format. The rules regarding which words are permitted have changed with time. American spelling was allowed in early shows, and more unspecified inflections were assumed to be valid. Section 3. Notable Contestants since Countdown's debut in 1982, there have been over 4,000 televised games and 54 complete series. There have also been 12 Champion of Champions tournaments, with the most recent in June 2006. Several of Countdown's most successful contestants have received national media coverage. Teenager Julian Fell set a record score of 146 in December 2002. 
More recently, 14-year-old Connor Travers became the youngest series champion in the show's history, gaining wide newspaper interest. At eight years old, Tan May Dixit was one of the youngest players ever to appear on the show when he achieved two wins in March 2005. He also received press attention for his offerings in the letters round, which included Fannies and Farted. In 1998, 16 celebrities were invited to play Celebrity Countdown, a series of eight games broadcast every Thursday evening over the course of eight weeks. The celebrities included Widely's successor Des Lynham, who defeated Sean Lloyd. The highest and lowest scores were posted in the same game, when Hugh Fernley Whittingstall defeated Jilly Goulden 47-9. Richard Whiteley and Carol Boardman competed in another special episode on Christmas Day 1997. For this game, the presenter's chair was taken by William G. Stewart, the host of fellow Channel 4 game show 15 to 1. Susie Dent took over Boardman's duties, and Mark Nyman occupied Dictionary Corner. The game was close fought and decided only by the crucial countdown conundrum Mistletoe, which Vorderman solved in two seconds. Section 4. In Popular Culture Countdown is often referenced and parodied in British culture. In the 2002 film About a Boy, protagonist Will Freeman is a regular viewer of Countdown. The programme is mentioned in an episode of British sitcom Father Ted, entitled The Old Grey Whistle Theft, Still Game, in the episode Kill Willie, and is also referenced in the very first episode of Little Britain from 2003. BBC impression sketch show Dead Ringers parodies Countdown numerous times, and another television programme, The Big Breakfast, parodied Countdown in a feature called Countdown Under. Comedy show A Bit of Fry and Laurie further lampooned Countdown in a sketch entitled Countdown to Hell. Fry played Richard Whiteley, while Giles Brandreth got the word Sloblock, an anagram of bollocks. Countdown has also generated a number of popular outtakes, with the letters producing the occasional word that was deemed unsuitable for the original broadcast. A round in which Dictionary Corner offered the word gobshite, featured in TV's Finest Failures in 2001, and in one episode, contestants Gino Corr and Lawrence Pierce both declared the word wankers. This was edited out of the programme, but has since appeared on many outtakes shows. Other incidents with only marginally rude words have made it into the programme as they appeared, such as those with Tan May Dixit referred to earlier, and a clip from a 2001 episode in which the word fart appeared on the letters boards, which also featured on 100 Greatest TV Moments from Hell. When Carol Vorderman first appeared on Have I Got News For You in 2004, one of the usual rounds was substituted for a conundrum round based on the week's news. The Doctor Who episode Bad Wolf, 2005, mentions a futuristic version of Countdown, in which the goal is to stop a bomb from exploding in 30 seconds. Richard Whiteley was the victim of a practical joke while presenting the show. The contestants and rounds had been planted as part of a gotcha, a regular prank feature on light entertainment show Noel's House Party. Whiteley did not uncover the joke until House Party presenter Noel Edmonds appeared on the set at the end of the programme. For a list of Countdown champions, see the article entitled List of Countdown Champions. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation Licence, available at www.gnu.org forward slash copyleft forward slash fdl.html.